everyone, my name is Bailey Burns, and if you don't know me, I'm a huge space nerd. Like, a huge space nerd. I even hope to be an astronaut one day. If you haven't been following my journey, I'm actually trying to figure out how to use a Rubik's Cube to help with my space goals. You see, a Rubik's Cube helps with a lot of things, like cognitive ability and 3D spatial awareness. Both of these things are really important for astronauts. Um, part of that training to hopefully one day to be an astronaut um, includes something called an analog mission. I just got back from my first analog mission. I'm wearing my shirt now. I have my mission patch. And that basically means that we uh, lived in a habitat, an isolated ha habitat, and pretended like we were living on the moon. We were completely self-sustained with solar panels and stuff, just like a moon base. If we left the habitat, we had to wear spacesuits to do missions, and we had minimal communication with people on Earth. Just like astronauts, we had to work out every day, and we ate a lot of dehydrated space food. We had mission objectives and tons of research experiments. Now this, this was the view outside of our window. It really looked like a different world out there, didn't it? This mission was part of high seas in Hawaii, and our research was partnered with NASA Goddard. I made lifelong friends with my crewmates, and I had a lot of fun doing this. There was a lot of things I learned. We focused on studying lava tubes and lava rocks, so I learned about geology and pretty much how the state of Hawaii formed from volcanoes. I also learned a lot about myself. It was a very high stress environment and I had to get along with five other people basically living in a large apartment for two weeks. It was pretty crazy. I had to do a lot of self-reflection. And um, the other thing is I brought my Rubik's Cube. I decided that um, I was training to do my microgravity flight where I had to solve the Rubik's Cube in under 20 seconds. Uh, what better time to work on my Rubik's Cube skills than in isolation, right? So I brought my cube with me to the pretend moon. I solved it every day and I worked on learning new algorithms and I even broke my previous record. What was interesting to me is if I was having an issue with the mission, I wasn't able to focus on the cube and my times would go up. It was a really good way to monitor my stress and how I deal with it. I also used the cube to bond with my crewmates. I stayed up late teaching one of them, Elliot, how to solve it. Yes, we were wearing onesies. He picked it up really quick and he was so proud when he figured out how to solve it for the first time. Here's one more thing I wanted to show you guys. I've been bringing this into science to do some observations on myself. Every day I solve the Rubik's Cube 10 times and I record the times to show my fastest, slowest, and average times. This helps me track my progress. I've been doing this since July and I'm really excited to show you guys what I've learned. This is the first graph I wanted to show you. These are the times that I outlined for you, and you can see this curve that's happening where I have good days and I have bad days, but in general, this is an insane uh, progression where back when I first started, I was averaging like 44 seconds, you know, and pretty quickly I dropped it down into the 30s, and then you see another little drop down to about 26 or so, and right now I'm averaging at about 25 seconds, which I'm really, really proud of. The other graph I wanted to show you is the days I was at high seas. Well, this looks pretty flat compared to the other graph, but I think it tells a really interesting story. These first three days over here is when I was first getting settled into the habitat, figuring out my new schedule, everything like that. You see, I had a really good day on September 10th, and then it starts going back up, and then it starts getting higher, and I started freaking out. I wasn't improving. I was doing so well, and it all just, I don't know, I lost it. So here on September 15th, I took a moment to myself and I said, Bailey, what's going on? What is bothering you? And I realized I was struggling a lot with feeling like the kid of the group and not really feeling like I had a place. So I took some time to reflect on that and to basically talk myself up and have that pep talk with myself. Well, my time was the fastest time I've ever had. And uh, since that day, my time stayed low. It wasn't just a fluke. They stayed low and I've continuously gotten better. So I think that's a really good example of using the Rubik's Cube to monitor how you're feeling and if there's something really bothering you that you need to address. That's all I have for you guys today. I used the Rubik's Cube during my moon mission to monitor how I was feeling, to create bonds with my fellow crewmates, and I even did science with it by charting how well I was doing. Um, I think you guys can see that there's a huge connection between the Rubik's Cube in STEM and the Rubik's Cube in space. So that's all from me, uh, from your favorite space cuber. I'll see you guys next time. Bye!